So, um, what is the mole? So, the mole is basically the most important concept to understand from Chem 1 to. Um, I know that sounds quite traumatic, but it is basically the only thing that you don't get retaught in 3 4 chemistry. Everything else, you know, your. Um, your uh, dispersion forces, all of the intermolecular bonding will get retaught. Um, your organic chemistry gets retaught. Everything gets retaught except for mole. So you really need to understand your mole and how to do calculations. So at first, mole is a little bit of a difficult concept to wrap your head around. Um, and there's lots of different ways to think about it. But really, all it is is a name. It's a name for 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules, atoms of something. So it's kind of like if you said, I can say I have 12 eggs, or I can say I have a dozen eggs. So I can say I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of water, or I can say I have one mole of water. So it's just a shorthand way of saying that you have a fixed amount of something. The three equations that are really important for the mole are your n equals n on na, n equals little m on big M, and n equals c over v, c times v. So uh, chemistry likes to be nice, nice and confusing and use the same letter for everything. So let's just make it super clear what all of these mean. So little n is mole. That applies for all three of these. Big N is number of particles. So we say number of particles and we use particles rather than molecules or atoms because it's sort of a group term that incorporates both of those. So in some questions, you might have to find the number of atoms or something and you can use this equation. In other questions, you might have to find the number of molecules or something and you still use the same one. So we use that particles term because it's sort of a catch-all for both of those things. Your Na is your Avogadro's number, which is the 6.02 times 10 to the 23 that we just talked about. So it's basically our dozen equivalent. Equation number two, again, your little n is mole. Your big M is mass, mass in grams. Your big M is your molar mass. So your molar mass is the mass of a particular atom or particular compound if you add together molar, the molar masses of all of the atoms. And this is given in grams per mole. So this is that number that's in your periodic table um, right at the bottom. So um, let me just jump back to a periodic table and I can show you. So here, this number here at the bottom, that's your molar mass. Great. Let's just jump back. Oh, there we go. And then finally, you have your N equals C over V. C stands for concentration. Concentration is in capital M, which is um, moles per litre. So you might see concentration written as either of those things, capital M or moles per litre. And then volume is volume, obviously, in litres. Cool. So really important to be familiar with those three equations and know how to use them fairly comfortably. So um, what you also need to know, other than the mole, is stoichiometry. So stoichiometry is basically an idea where we can use mole amounts and equival um, use equivalents using um, a predetermined uh, balanced chemical equation. So this makes a little bit more sense if we go through a particular example. So in this example, we're saying 25 grams of methane is burnt in oxygen. How many grams of water is produced? assuming there's an excess of oxygen. So we'll talk more about excess limiting in just a second, but let's just ignore that for now. So your first step in any sort of 
for your question, most calculation questions is to convert to mole. So first thing we want to do is convert our mass to a mole. So to do that, we use this equation here. If we, we can use this and say that our mole is going to be mass divided by molar mass. So mole is our mass, which is 25 grams, divided by the molar mass of methane, which is going to be 12 plus 4, which is 16. So it's 12 because carbon is 12. And then it's four because um, it's four um, four hydrogens that each have one um, one each. So uh, let's just quickly go through that. So that gives us, oops, one point five six mole. Then we need to figure out um, our ratio of, um, of methane to water. And we use that by using our balanced chemical equation. We always do unknown over known. So basically what that's saying is the mole of water is going to be in the ratio of unknown. So the unknown in this case is water because we don't know the mole of it, divided by the known. So the mole of water is 2. So the coefficient in front of there, and then the mole of methane is 1 because there's no coefficient. So 2 over 1 times the mole of your known, which is methane. So we take our 1.56, multiply that by 2, and then we get the mole of water being 3.125. The final part is to then convert that back into a mass. So the mass of H2O. is going to be the mole times the molar mass, if we rearrange that equation, the mole times molar mass. Then the mole from before is 3.125. The molar mass of water is going to be 18, so 16 for oxygen plus the two waters. So we multiply that by 18. And then we end up with 56. 0.25 and that's in grams. Cool. So that's your basic stoichiometry. Really important to be able to do those types of calculations because they're super, super common. All right. Um, let's quickly talk about. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um, this is glitching a little bit. So Let's quickly talk about limiting and excess reagents. So uh, if we use that same example from before, but now we have six mole of oxygen and two mole of methane. So basically we need to figure out what is limiting our reaction. What do we have less of that's going to limit um, our reaction? So basically is all of the oxygen going to react or is all of the methane going to react? So let's think about it. Um, so if six moles of your oxygen reacts, then that means three moles of your methane is needed, right? Because for every one mole of methane we use, we use two moles of oxygen. So we would need half the mole of methane um, to, in order to fully react. So because we need three moles of methane, if six moles of oxygen react, um, and we don't have that, we only have two moles of methane, that means methane is our limiting reagent. So we don't have enough methane to use up all of our oxygen. Then we can consider that, okay, if I use two moles of methane, then that means I need four moles of oxygen because my moles of oxygen is double the mole of methane. Therefore, my oxygen is in excess by two mole because I have six moles of oxygen, but I only need four. So I have an excess of two um, that's not going to be used within the equation. So, so just some general rules for stoic. Um, always convert to mole. So if you get a mass, convert it to mole. If you get a volume, convert it to mole. But always remember to use your standard units. So your mass before you convert it to a mole has to be in grams. 
your volume should always be in litres. So make sure you convert to more before you do anything. You really need to make sure your equation is balanced. Often a previous part of the question will ask you to balance the equation, but if it hasn't, then make sure you do that first. Then you use your unknown over known to find your ratio, and then use your either your n equals CV or n equals mass or molar mass to go back and find your mass or volume or whatever is required. So those are your general steps to go about strike. Um, we'll just quickly touch on percentage composition because this is something that does come up. So percentage composition is basically just the percentage by mass of a particular element in the compound. So the formula is the composition of a particular element's mass in one mole of that compound and then the mass in one mole of, or the mass of the whole compound essentially. So Essentially, what you would do is get the molar mass of um, the particular element. So let's say I'm trying to find the percentage composition of carbon in methane. You would find the molar mass of carbon, which is 12, divided by the molar mass of the entire compound, which is 16, times by 100. So you have 12 divided by 16, which gives you 75%. So that's one way to do it, using molar mass. Sometimes you'll be asked to do it in um, uh, using mass instead of molar mass, but it's a similar idea there. Um, the next thing to quickly touch on is empirical formula. So there are a few steps to calculate the um, molecular formula. Um, when you're given an empirical formula. So the easiest thing is to first let your mass of your entire compound be 100 grams and then find the mass of each of those elements in the compound. Because we're saying um, the compound is 100 grams, you're often given the uh, percentage of each of the different elements. So for example, if it's 75% carbon, then the mass of carbon would be 75 grams. You then divide the mass by the molar mass to get the number of mole of each of your elements. And then you divide all of those mole values by the smallest mole value in order to get a whole number ratio. Sometimes you have to multiply by a whole number, um, like two or three, in order to get rid of any fractions that you might have after step number four. And that's um, basically just reiterating that once again. Um, and also, sorry, this is trying to find your empirical formula. And then once you have your empirical formula with that step, um, you use your molar mass of your empirical formula and the molar mass of the compound that's usually given to you in the question and you divide them by each other. So you take molar mass of compound, divide it by the molar mass of the empirical formula, and you'll get some whole number there. It might be one or two or three. And then you multiply each element in the empirical formula by the answer that you found in number three. So often these two processes of finding the empirical formula and the molecular formula go together. So use those together um, as you go. Um, 